Hello and welcome to Operation 8-Bit Nibbles and Bites. I'm your host Tony Landy and over there we have Sparky running the camera and making snarky comments. In our video on restoring this Mac 512K, I pointed out that the LCD display we got for the project was just a little too big and that when we mounted it, some of the screen was cut off at the edges by the case. We were able to get around this problem on our Mac emulator by compiling it to run at 800 by 600 resolution, but this still left a large black border around the edges. Also, that really didn't help solve the problem on our Raspberry Pi OS desktop. As you can see here, the edges of the display are still hidden by the case and the bezel. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you an easy fix for rescaling a display on the Raspberry Pi to fit into the viewable area. Plus, we're going to take a tip from one of our viewers on how we can reduce the black border around the screen when it's running as a Mac. But before we begin, just a reminder to please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Okay, let's get to it. Take a trip back in time with me to an era where ultra-thin television technologies only existed in science fiction. A time when huge, heavy CR telev CRT televisions like this one ruled the living room. It was a dark time for TV watchers and gamers. In the early days of television, the combination of various size screens and an absolute lack of standardization made it incredibly difficult for broadcasters to ensure that everything would display properly on any given television. So what they would do is send extra bits of data in the TV signal, which in turn the set would decode to make sure everything lined up properly. Now the problem is that the info could show up along the edges of the picture, and when this happened people would think that their set was broken which led to service calls, return sets, and overall aggravation for everybody involved. To make sure that this didn't happen, manufacturers designed their sets to overscan the screen area. Basically, they'd zoom into the image slightly so you'd lose the edges of the picture, but you'd never see something unintended. Now, back here in the future, Overscan is a relic and it really isn't needed anymore. But it's still annoyingly part of many high def televisions. For example, if you've ever tried to connect a computer to a TV for gaming or streaming, you may have run into a problem where the edges of the screen bleed off the sides. Here's an example on the Raspberry Pi we used for our Mac connected to one of the TV monitors in the studio. Now one way to fix this on the latest Raspberry Pi OS is to just go into the Raspberry Pi configuration, click on the display tab, and then from there, enable the overscan option. This fixes the problem on the studio monitor, but unfortunately it didn't make enough of an adjustment on our Mac, so we're going to have to fix that manually. I'm going to open up a terminal window and then start up nano using the sudo command and we're going to be editing the config.txt file in the boot folder. The first step is to make sure that the disable overscan property is set to zero. Next, we uncomment these four properties and then set the values. The higher the number, the more border you get. Now I'll just save my changes, exit nano, and reboot. And voila, everything now fits without running over the edges of the display area. Now I want to turn my attention to the Mac emulator. As I mentioned earlier, we got around the display issue before by setting it to run at 800 by 600, but that left this big black border around the edges of the desktop. One of our viewers picked up on that and suggested that we could fill in some of that space with a weird Mac-only screen resolution of 832 by 624. Back in 1992, Apple produced a line of color displays comprising of a 14-inch monitor capable of 640x480, a 16-inch monitor that ran that weird 832x624, and a 20-inch version at an even weirder resolution of 1152x870. 
So we thought we'd give it a try and we created a new VMAC version at 832 by 624 and fired it up. And as you can see, it did close up some of that dead space, but there's still a substantial border. Since we'd come this far, we decided we might as well try to get rid of as much of that border as possible. Now, according to the mini VMAC docs, when you're setting a screen resolution, we need to keep the horizontal resolution at a multiple of 32. There doesn't seem to be a limit on what the vertical resolution has to be. So we did some quick math and figured out that if we went with a really odd size of 960 by 720, it would fill up most of the screen and leave us just the tiniest of borders. And as you can see when we fired this version up, there is barely any dead space at all anymore. So a few important things to note. Number one, while that final tweak does take up all of the available screen real estate, most of the games for older Macs aren't designed to run at that high of a resolution. So they aren't going to benefit from the larger screen. Another thing is that we were running at a size that never actually existed. So there may be some compatibility issues with certain programs. Anyway, that about wraps it up for this episode of Nibbles and Bites. If you enjoyed this video, and we hope you did, and you'd like us to do more content like this, please make sure to subscribe to our channel, leave a comment, and hit that thumbs up button. Also, please consider supporting us on Patreon. As a reminder, all of the profits from any ad revenue that we make from this channel go to support charitable organizations. But as a Patreon supporter, you can help us offset some of the production costs associated with creating this content. As always, for a complete list of the charities we support and how you can help, please visit our website. I've left a link to that in the description below. Again, we hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time on Operation 8-Bit.